Hey, what's going on everyone? Joe Menza here and I'm doing a little watercolor painting here. I've sped this one up a bit. I know a lot of people don't like that, but it would be a very, very long painting and a very long narration without doing so. So you can see I'm going to use a combination of spray bottles and paint here. We're going to paint almost kind of like an oil painting in a way. I'm going to do a landscape mountain scene and here I've sprayed on a couple of colors, an orangey color and a yellow ochre, okay? And I just kind of want a basic uh, application here. You don't have to use a spray bottle. Obviously, you can brush this on. But the advantage of the spray bottle is you can do things thinner. It kind of adds a little more spontaneity to it. Um, now, you can see I used the larger spray. I've got one of those continuous spray bottles I bought a couple months ago. Um, and I really like the continuous sprayer just for adding water. It, it does fine spraying as opposed to droplets. So we've got that sort of background on here. And now I'm going to paint in over the top of that. Um, that's just to kind of combine the colors, create a little bit of... Uh, just a little bit of a unifier and keep the light in the middle so I kind of know where I want to keep things. I want to break that up a little bit in with the spray and I'm just kind of blending this in a little bit trying to keep a little bit of light going and of course I kind of adapt this as I'm going along it may not go according to original plan I might see something like I say call it a little bit of an audible so I'm going to start doing in the mountain here this is a ultramarine blue a little bit of Payne's gray and I'm using the hockey brush here the Ron Ranson and we're just kind of laying this in. Eventually, we're going to put a little snow on here, a little bit of white. And you'll see how I, I approach that now. Um, I'm just going to clear a little bit away of the top here. I kind of want to define the top of that mountain. I know we're going a little bit fast here, but maybe this will give you some ideas. Doing your own type thing. A little bit more of a spray. This is a 11 by 15 Strathmore 400. I'm going to do a little scraping here just to show you that. Um, the snow I put on top might cover that up, but if you didn't want to use white, you can do this sort of scraping here. Get yourself a nice plastic card, and you can do a little bit of scraping, and then you can add a little bit of dark to it. After I do a mountain, I like to spray it a little bit. just breaks up the paint, breaks it up, like creates a little textural effect to it. You can re-add your scrapings. And this is acceptable right here, just like this. I mean, you could really leave it just like that. Um, you can go in, you can add some darks, little shadows in underneath. you got to be careful. You run the risk of covering up what you scraped. You might have to scrape it again. Um, so, you know, it's a whole thing there. Now, I want it to be a little warmer above the mountain. You see what I just did? I know it went kind of quick, but I sprayed my yellow and my orange over the mountain there. And it immediately gave me some more warm tones without having to actually brush that in. So there's another advantage of that. I'm going to add in a little bit of foliage on the sides of this mountain. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of... Uh, and there's probably a little bit of Viridian in there from my palette. And I'm just going to quickly brush in some greenery on the bottom. And now I'm taking my hake brush that's relatively dry. I just put in a little bit of a tree there um, just to get the basics of it going. We're going to layer this to some degree. Again, it's going to be sort of like the old-time TV painters, but with watercolor. Okay. Now the tree, we can layer that. We can go in with some yellows and some darker greens and utilize the tips of the of the brush itself the brush being somewhat dry and I'm gonna put a little green in this mountain I don't know maybe that's not the right way to go um, I wasn't happy with that uh, when I did it so that's kind of what led me into going into the white it was fine the way it was um, sometimes you go to make a choice, and uh, it turns out to be not good. And as you can see, I'm re-scraping it here. Um, but at least it sh shows you a little bit of, you know, the different ideas that you can do. And of course, this is fine, too. Um, I just gave it a little blast with the yellow, 
and I'm going to give it a quick dry here. Because those colors are transparent and they're very weak in the spray bottle, about an inch of paint squeezed out into about a half a bottle, about two ounces of water, ounce or two of water. Um, you have to experiment a little bit. I'm still experimenting with it. But it's a great tool to have to spray over the top of things to give you a little darker, a little lighter, without disturbing it with your brush. So I'm just touching up a little bit of foliage on the bottom here, kind of working this tree. Again, it's a layering thing. It's a layering thing that's, you know, not in one shot. A little bit more complex type of, type of painting. Put a tree over to the left. We want that mountain kind of peeking through. And of course, we got that nice light and the yellow coming down, so that worked out nicely. Um, can give it another little warming blast with the yellow and uh, some little, little something there. I need to rub out. It's a uh, little, little, got a little dirty there. So you can see there's a nice little texture on that mountain. I mean, you got to be careful what you're scraping because sometimes it leaves scratches on the paper. So you don't really want to go in that heavy. And I just kind of rubbed that with a tissue a little bit, get rid of that. Whatever happened off the edge of my brush, sometimes it happens. And I'm just, now I'm here, I'm just going to clear out a little, whiten up to underneath the mountain here a little bit. Sort of a reverse painting type thing, reverse color removal. And I've got my other little spray bottle. This is like a green. I've got a few different spray bottles. So we've got, i got red, i got the primaries. So we've got blue, red, and yellow. Those primaries can be anything like yellow ochre, uh, pyral red, or, you know, whatever, whatever you like to get your own style of painting. Uh, yellow ochre. And then I've got some couple of greens. So a couple of greens, a couple of reds, a couple of blues, cerulean blue. Um, purple, and as you can see, you can see that mountain has more different different colors now from being sprayed over the top. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and work in some foliage below this mountain and work on the trees a little bit. Again, this is with the layering lemon yellow, a warmer yellow such as uh, cad yellow hue. Or even a cad yellow is fine. The, the cad yellow or the yellow azo yellow, those are both good yellows for doing foliage and building up and layering and brightening up. One of the things with watercolor is things tend to dull out, lose their brightness from when you're painting them, uh, and kind of flatten out a little bit. So the layering will help intensify colors and keep them that way. So now we got a lot of yellow. It kind of looks like maybe too much, but at the same time, you're going to see um, they are going to kind of calm down a little bit. And of course, if they're a little too intense, you give them a little spray with the clear spray water. And again, where we're at now, we're not fully defined. We're shaping it. We're sculpting it. We're sculpting what the end result is going to be. Sculpting, not sculpting, but sculpting. And I'm giving it a, a little spray and then a little bit of a dry just to break that up a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with a little bit of my white. I'm going to use Chinese white rather than gouache. At least this way it'll stay the purity of watercolor. And I'm going to use my plastic. I don't really use this too much. This is a plastic, uh, plastic knife. And I'm just lightly kind of bringing that in. I think if I turn the knife and I go more toward the side, this is just, we're not trying to frost a cake. We're sort of lightly letting it float on the paper so that it creates a textural effect. So just kind of 
bringing that in where the snow would be. And we still re retain a little bit of that purple texture in the background. You can do as much or as little of this or none of it if you want to. Now, I've given it a little spray there. I know we're moving a little bit fast, but I've given it a little spray to warm it up. Now, this is the little trick. So, if you spray the white with like a yellow ochre or something like that, it'll take the intensity out of the white to some degree so that it doesn't look so stark. You know, when you use white in a watercolor painting, it kind of stands out a little bit too much. But I found I take my spray bottle and I spray a little bit over the top and I can just tint that white. Now I'm coming in with yellow ochre, azo yellow, lemon yellow, and trying to get really the brightness out of these trees as much as I mainly can. Now that I'm, I'm happy with these mountains in the back now. And I'm building up these, the foliage below the mountain here. Cad yellow hue, a little bit of blue, maybe a little bit of viridian. I'm trying to brighten up things. You know, I tend to paint things kind of more the colors you find in nature. But um, in this case here, we're painting, uh, you know, we want a bright, colorful painting. People like a lot of bright colors too, you know. People want things to stand out. So again, we're building this foliage up underneath. So here I was going to do some foliage on the bottom, but then I started looking this and I saw thought, oh, this will look nice reflective, like uh, it'll look nice as like a water underneath. So that's what I'm going to work on. I'm going to put some tree trunks in here over this tree. Now that I've got the colors, you know, pretty, pretty intense back over here. So now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to scrape this tree while the paint's still a little bit wet. Get a little bit of a bark look out of it. My plastic card. The tree trunk was done with like Van Dyke Brown. A little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of blue. So what I'm doing here is I rubbed out some paint. I'm going to try to get some reflections here going in this mountain below. Not mountain below, but reflection of the mountain below. Well, that's drying up a little bit. Just a little more highlighting of the, of the trees.
So now here I'm just trying to get below into the water. I'm trying to get, uh, you know, a water look, sort of a blurred look to it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back with some of that Chinese white and my my frosting knife. <laughs> and I'm going to, uh, no, it's a palette knife. It's just a plastic one, cheap plastic one. And I'm just going to rub some of that paint down. We have a tendency to try to, like, mirror image things by making the exact shape. But really, you just need to go straight vertically down. And you'll come up with this really the same effect. And now I'm just kind of creating a little blur with a little dry brush across the top. And just a little more frosting. Okay, and then we'll work in a few more little highlights. Got to look back as you're as you're uh, painting because uh, you can uh, see where things are dried back a little bit, and you can layer one more time. It's this layering that gives you sort of that oil painting effect. And then I'm going to start bringing out these, this foliage here, a little bit reflecting into the water. And I'll give it a little bit of a dry. And here I'm going to take my card now, instead of the palette knife, I'm going to take my plastic card. And I'm just going to put in a little bit of a water line with the, with the, I think this is, this is titanium white. Uh, not Chinese white. I don't know. There's a lot of different whites. You have white gouache, Chinese white, titanium white. Um, there's a few different whites. And the Chinese white and titanium white are basically a watercolor. And the, then you have, of course, your gouache which I guess is not as transparent. So rather than you bring in the gouache into it, we'll stick with the watercolor white. 
and just, you know, put in that water line there. So just a few little minor details, and this one is uh, pretty close to being done. I hope you uh, enjoyed this painting. I hope you enjoyed, you know, seeing a little different way, different approach. Just going to give it a little more of a dry, the hair dryer. And then we'll take a look at it with the mat on. I always have to unclip and then I move my paper up to make room for the mat. And then the mat, once I put that on there, I'll get an idea if there's any little little minor alterations. I, I start off with a dirtier, a dirtied mat because if there's any wet paint, it'll mess up my mat. And then once it's finally dry, I'll put a clean, pristine mat on it. So just giving it a little sign with my acrylic acrylic white pen that I happen to find I like. And that's pretty much it. So I'll put on my my nice mat, now that I know everything's pretty dry. This one's nice and clean. I go through a bunch of these because I keep getting them dirty. And we'll pull the camera back and take a look at it. So there it is, a finished painting. This one probably took an hour to do, maybe a give or take and sped up, we're in about the 25 minute range. So a little longer than the norm, but the results are pretty good. Here it is again. We'll zoom in here and you can see some of the little details. A few little birds I added. You can see that spray pattern of paint almost creates like a little bit of a dot pixelated pattern, which I like. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Have a good week.